So um, thanks for the opportunity to come and, and uh, talk to you. Uh, some of you may have been uh, here for the for the event that was exactly one year ago, so I think three days different or something. Um, so uh, I know some of you probably don't know anything at all about cross-laminated timber, so I apologise for going over a little bit of ground we may have covered for some of you uh, last year. But I'm going to start off by just giving you a quick idea of what cross-laminated timber is about and then Rob's going to tell you about how we make it and Sam's going to tell you a little bit about the technical side of it. <coughs> so, so what's cross-laminated timber? Can we read that okay? It's, um, we, cross-laminated timber is, is um, panels which are normally three, five or seven layers and they are laid together, laminated together with the grain alternating in direction at each layer. The layers are normally they can be as thin as, as uh, 19 millimetres and they can be as thick as 45 millimetres. One of the attractions of CLT is that we can take quite low grade material which would otherwise be a bit of a problem for the sawmilling industry and we can put it into the middle layers of CLT where it's not seen and where it doesn't have a great deal of structural, uh, doesn't make a great deal of structural contribution unless we're trying to cantilever in two directions. But for a normal situation where we're trying to span in one direction primarily, we can put quite low grade material into the middle. We can make these panels up to 400 millimetres thick. And we just we, we have a whole range of different panel configurations just depending upon what the architect and the engineer want. Any length up to 15 metres long, any width up to 3.4 metres wide. <coughs> and these panels can be used for floors or for walls or for roofs. And we can also put them together with other engineered wood products like um, LBL or Blue Lamb to make uh, composite structures and also steel of course. So uh, where circumstances make that a sensible design solution, the material lends itself well to being combined with other materials. So Rob's going to tell you quickly how we make it. Okay. <coughs> we start the process uh, first of all by getting the rough sawn timber from the sawmillers, either uh, Douglas fir or radiator pine, and then we put it through the cut cross saw, which will cut the timber to exact uh, lengths, uh, the lengths that we're going to press and the press. From there, we will either finger joint or take the piece as it is. So if we need to make long pieces up to 15 metres long, we'll just continually finger joint so we can produce a, a plank as long as we like, up to 15 metres for our press or longer for other applications. The most uh, common types of timber that we're, or dimensions that we're using are the, the 19 mil. But generally we're using the 35 to 150 rough sawn timber. Now we dimension that to an exact size in our planer. It has to be very well dimensioned so that when the layers get laid up, it's a very even glue spread of, of spread through the layers of CLT. We then take the planks, we'll, we'll put them next to the press, get them all ready to be laid up into the press. A press is basically a bath and it's a, a vacuum press, so it's all done with low, low impact, low uh, energy consumption. So we'll lay the planks into the press lengthways, then, then crossways, then lengthways again for a three layer layout, and so on to get our layout of, of timber that we require. In between each layer we'll go over the, go over the, um, the planks with a glue spreader, we'll applicate glue, um, just a PUR glue, which is a moisture cure glue, um, it's also waterproof so it can handle moisture. We'll then lay the membrane over the top, suck all the air out of it, and we can create up to about 500 tonne of pressure in our press. From there we'll take the, the laminates out. As we all laminate together, we can then bring them into the cutting. There's, there's our very, very first panel that came out of the press, the very first one we've done. the same panel coming out and then these are the first panels that we 
put onto a project in Waikiki Island. Those are uh, five layer layups that are 175 millimeters per pounds. That's the uh, first of the panels getting flown in to Waikiki Island. They were flown by helicopter onto the, the site because it had very limited access. They were able to fly <coughs> all 10 panels in two hours. So it was essentially, and, and they also did a lot of other, um, all the framing was flying on once they got the foundations uh, in place, got the um, panels on the foundations. There are some of the panels there. You can see some little lifting, sort of shiny little bits there. They're the lifting hooks. We have a hook system that we can hook on real quickly and then <coughs> take off and place them in place nice and accurately. There's one of the five layer layups there. As you can see, we've got quite a good cantilever going with that. With the five layer layup, of course, we can also span both directions, so we could put it just on some posts. <coughs> There's the cantilever again. So in, in the factory, we're dimensioning these on the uh, on a CNC bridge we'll be, that we'll be getting in the future, so they'll be dimensioned to millimetre accuracy. So it will make for a very easy and quick assembly. I'll pass you back over to Robin, who'll explain some of the technical details in the testing that we've done. Thanks. <laughs> yeah, so one of the so we pressed our started pressing these these things and un unlike uh, John who's really groundbreaking developing new ideas we are uh, this cross laminated timber is not you know we're not we're not uh, breaking new ground here this is uh, very well established um, technology which has uh, got a very strong foothold and hundreds of thousands of cubic meters of this material are being used. In, um, in Europe, and it's also then also now being used in the UK and starting in North America as well, and also Scandinavia. So it's a re it's a reasonably well understood technology, and it's rather surprising that it hasn't. That I'm often asked, you know, how, how come we? You know, if it's so good, why haven't we been doing it? And um, I think the reason really is that there hasn't been a plant. To manufacture this stuff, so no architect or engineer has been able to specify it um, because there's nobody that's been able to make it, and uh, so that's a perfect catch-22 because the timber industry, of course, doesn't want to build a factory to manufacture product when there's no architect specifying it. So you go round and round with a chicken and egg situation, and that's actually what's been happening for the last. Uh, Good number of years. So at then we decided really the only way to break that apart is to build a, a plant and and uh, bring this to the market. And um, so we're breaking new ground in that sense, but we're not trying to do something that hasn't been done in other parts of the world. So um, one of the things we had to do, of course, before we before we could start delivering our material to the market was uh, some uh, extensive testing. So we've, we've spent some months getting the production right and uh, those panels being tested at Scion and Rotorua so that we know what they can do. They're, they're very strong. Those are, that's a 150 millimeter thick um, five layer board and I'm not sure what um, what that rig would weigh but, weigh, but uh, probably maybe five ton, do you think, John? No? Yeah, it's more like 12, 15. Yeah, okay, yeah. more than that, yeah, okay. Yeah, so um, as you can see, not not a, not a lot of deflection, and this is a product that we we we're just just getting going on now. We've just started to manufacture these. This is um, this is a cassette panel. So in the left-hand picture, can you see the mouse? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <coughs> you can see that the layer. This there's a on the bottom of the press. There's a layer of boards running in this direction. That's got a layer of glue spread on it, and now there's been a layer put crossways. And this set of joists, or rafters, if this is a roof, um, have been pre-assembled uh, elsewhere in the factory and they're being flown in. You can see in the next picture, there's been a set of rafters dropped into that end. This, they're making two panels at a time here. And now the layer, the crosswise layers go on top of that and then there'll be a lengthwise layer go in this direction. And that will be pressed in one pressing. Now that's a, a, a panel 
that's the first one that we made when we had a visit from Nathan Guy uh, two or three weeks ago and that panel was spanning six meters and it'll rate five kPa so that's a, a very good flooring panel for a commercial building uh, such as we've got many to build in Christchurch and we're very excited about this product it gives us some um, massive strength and very very efficient use of material the forklift driver at this point got um, uh, had, a, had a panic attack and thought he was going to get showered with concrete blocks so he insisted on having a glut put in the middle there but there was still 25 millimeters of daylight over that glut and then we got really serious and even there there's plenty of clearance for that glut and those choices were 125 millimeters by 35 millimeters so um, you can see that a box being constructed like this is massively strong um, it, it gives you the opportunity to run services through the cavity or you can also put in uh, insulation material and in this particular case they've got a batten going across and they've got another layer, another CLT panel below to give the ceiling, a separate ceiling to the space below which helps with fire ratings and acoustics and so on. So I'm just going to show you, um, Rob's talked about um, the factory as it is at the moment. We've, we've, we are just installing the finger joiner. We've been, uh, we'll be lighting it up next week. It's a machine that weighs I think Twelve and a half tons, or something. Yeah, it's, um, it's a big, expensive uh, German, German-made machine, and uh, it's the first finger joiner of its type, which has been impo imported into New Zealand for 50 years. Which just uh, shows you that we haven't actually been doing a lot with structural timber um, in, in, in that time. So, um, after we get the panels out of the press, we we are at the moment, up and up until. Uh, Right now, we can only manufacture panels six metres long because that's the longest timber we can buy. Once we've got the finger joiner lit up next week, we'll be able to increase our panels up to 15 metres long. So the idea, of course, is to make the panels as big as you can because timber being relatively light compared to concrete, you can lift it, it's about a fifth of the mass of concrete, so you can lift quite large panels on the same crane and, of course, the number of lifts, it doesn't take any longer to lift a panel that's 15 metres long than it does to take lift a panel that's 5 metres long. So cranes are expensive and they take time on the building site and of course every panel you put in you've got to fix in place and you've also got to deal with the joints. So an air tightness is, air tightness is something we want to achieve in the buildings. So the bigger the panels you can put in, the faster it goes and the less work there is to do on the site and the better the job you get as well. So we want to make the panels really big and the finger joiner will allow us to do that but then we have to finish them. So at the moment it's quite straightforward for us with a good carpenter to finish the panels up 6 metres long by 3 metres wide. We can do it by hand quite fairly efficiently. But this is what we're going to be doing from now on. <coughs> so this is a CNC bridge. Um, it <coughs> runs on tracks that are 50 metres long. You can see the operator over here, gives you some idea of the scale of this machine. Um, it, has on, it has two machining heads, uh, this one uh, five axis saw blade is uh, carrying a saw that's one meter in diameter. So, um, so the saw is like this and it can turn itself from vertical to horizontal for 360 degrees this way and of course the normal three movements as well. So more or less any cut that you can make with a saw blade, um, you can make with, uh, with this kind of, this kind of uh, head. The second head is the one you can see on the right hand side. That's a, a machining spindle which has a soft locking hydraulic chuck. And that uh, can select its own tool from a carousel tool changer which carries 18 different tools. You can see the tool changer here. So as the machine needs a particular tool, it goes away to the tool changer, gets it and chucks it and then takes it out. And the whole idea of this is that from the architect's drawing board, we don't need working drawing, workshop drawings. We can, we can, we should be able to take a CAD drawing and put it loaded directly into the machine and manufacture it. So 
the architecture and engineering profession are going to love this because we don't actually care whether we make all the panels the same or we make everyone different. So um, it's uh, very nice for architects and, and engineers to be able not to be confined and we can offer pretty much complete design freedom. So you saw the saw there being used to cut out an opening and of course you can't with a saw cut right into the corner so you finish it with a router as you saw and then with a machine of this kind it can also do sort of micro surgery as well as this big stuff. What it's doing here is just cleaning out the corner there which is the radius of the, of the router cutter to make it perfectly square so that if you want to put a bit of joinery in there it will match, it will fit, it'll fit perfectly. The machine has in its tool changer a chainsaw. Um, there are some things you can really only do with a chainsaw. Um, uh, they, um, the, this particular cut you're seeing now could have been done with the big saw. Um, it's just they're using the chainsaw for demonstration here, but there are some plunging cuts um, which really can only be done with a chainsaw. For example, if you're wanting to sit a wall unit down and you want to sit it over a steel bracket and then bolt through, then um, you really want to be able to cut that mortise. Um, the only really efficient way to do it is with a chainsaw. So you'll see in a minute the chainsaw being used for that, for that purpose. <coughs> so this will be the bottom of a, of a wall unit. polystyrene or anything else with that with that unit as well. This is using the tool changer to rip to um, chase out uh, channels for electrical cables or other services. Um, we can also leave cavities in the middle of the of the walls for running those through. That's rip, rip, routing out uh, light, light socket boxes. And here's here is a machine being used for um, to half lap a panel which will ultimately be used as a floor and you can see a half lap joint on that little sample over there but we have to do it by hand at the moment and um, this is going to make life um, a lot easier and very quick. It's a wall panel and this with a 5 axis machine any kind of complicated routing so if you're wanting to um, if you're wanting to drill on funny angles or route around uh, so that you get a basin shaped effect, then basically I was in a building, I think Michael might have been with Do you come with me to a kindergarten where they'd rounded out clouds and the, from the wall, connecting walls between the kids could climb through and you know, it was yeah, very nice. So that's what a CNC bridge does now. So that's sort of the that's a bit more about the product and, and what kinds of things we can do with CLT. And the challenge, one of the challenges in front of us now is to, is to teach or make available to the educated, to the uh, specifying professions, the architects and the engineers, uh, what, what the qualities of these panels are. And Sam, we're, we're very fortunate to have, have, have um, come across Sam really. He's doing his um, Masters of Engineering Management um, at Canterbury University. He's, a, he's a, had, has his structural engineering degree and has had a couple of years, I think, in practice um, as, in, in a structural engineering in a professional office. But he's gone back to uni to do his engineering, his Masters of Engineering Management, and, and he's using us as a as a project. And one of the aspects of that project is to help us come up with our design guide, which we aim to have on our website by the end of the year, which will tell the, the architects and the engineers what we can do. So you talk a little bit about what you're going to be doing. Sam. Thank you, Robin. Yes, well, um, like Robin said, with a structural engineering background, I, and I'm sure Richard Evans will probably agree with me here, um, I know how important it is to um, design things as efficiently as you can um, engineers especially at the moment are run off their feet but also to design things as, re as reliably and consistently as you can as well and so I've decided to um, help XLAM out here for people to, um, for architects and engineers to specify a pro product more to come up with um, span tables and a CLT design code. Now I've literally only just started doing this in the last week or so so I'm still developing a few spreadsheets for that but um, 
My vision, my vision for this booklet is to provide not only span tables but a whole design process for CLT right from um, first principles so that we do get a consistent design throughout New Zealand and that engineers know exactly how this material um, structurally works. Mm -hmm. Now, um, as Robin, Robin said earlier, it's, um, cross laminated timber isn't new. It's been um, around for at least 10 years over in Europe, so there are similar um, design, design tables like this um, in European um, manufacturing firms. But we're obviously using different woods and different glues than what they use over there. So we've got different strengths and um, stiffnesses. And so we can't just get these tables and, um, and sort of convert them into a New, New Zealand code because it, yeah, they're just different materials, even though they're the same, the same structure. Um, yeah, so I'm, I'm looking at designing that and also to have um, it all on the internet so it's a one-stop shop, um, not only for the structural design but also for the acoustic design, thermal design, fire design, um, and so the architects and engineers can look at this on the website and know exactly what's going on and hopefully that will bring, bring sales um, to a great, great New Zealand product. Um, so the span tables like that you saw earlier on would be um, ideal to design simple structures with a uniformly distributed load over the, over the structure for, for all the walls, the floors and also the shear walls. Um, for the structure, so um, and it'll, it'll allow architects to also come up with um, preliminary designs and reliable preliminary designs for this material. Um, so hopefully it's a good resource for us. Thanks, yeah. Sam. <coughs> so what you're looking at there is, is, an, is an example of a building where cross-laminated timber can be used without any, any um, um, concentrated, any, any structure to support concentrated loads. This idea of this kind of building is that is that the loads are distributed down from the from through the building through through uh, intermediate walls, internal walls to, to the foundation. So you don't need to have a skeletal structure of, of, um, of beams and columns to carry those loads. And these, this is the kind of um, honeycomb construction which is being used overseas to build buildings that are up. To, well, the one in Melbourne that's just been topped off is ten stories high. That's the tallest one so far. Um, so it's a, a great it's a great solution for buildings where <coughs> we, we use of the light, use of the building is not expected to change uh, radically during its lifetime. So it's not the kind of thing you would use for a for a retail complex, for example, where you would be maybe wanting to turn it from retailing a motor car showroom today and uh, doctor's suite surgery ten years from now. You know when the lease comes to an end and the building has to be reconfigured. But for uh, uh, for an apartment building, or a uh, or or uh, a student hostel, or an old people's uh, retirement uh, village, or you know any kind of certain kinds of educational buildings, hotels, anything like that, this kind of uh, structure is is, um, is absolutely perfect for CLT. Um, are you going to talk a bit, a bit about your the the um, the Hereford Street project? Well, the, the former, the former project, the project. The former project, yeah. Yeah, I would, I would work yeah, here. yeah, okay. So the CLT, we think, will have a will have a, a, a role to play also in the other kind of structure where you have some sort of load bearing, something to carry concentrated loads, but you still got to have floors and shear walls and the like. So we think we've got a role to play in that area as well. Uh, Michael talked a little bit about Murray Grove. Um, earlier, earlier on, this is the this is until uh, a month ago. This was the tallest CLT building in the world. It's in, designed and uh, and built in London, and it's um, one concrete. It's got a concrete foundation, which is the, and which is also the first story, and then eight stories of CLT on top. And um, it, this building was built by four carpenters, and um, they they built. Uh, these uh, they built it in. They did. They took three days per floor to put the skeleton, the steel, the uh, to put the, um, the the structure in place. It's clad on the outside with um, with um, uh, steel cladding material, but that's not and that that wasn't is not included in the three days. But the actual CLT structure, they were doing three three days per floor. So um, as Michael said, all the apartments sold off the plans in one day. So. And this this uh, is the style of building that's being built right in this right in the heart of downtown Melbourne by Lend Lease, which is I think I'm right in saying the largest 
a apartment builder in Australia. And the manager of Lenny Lease told me in Melbourne two or three months ago that 50% of the work on their drawing boards at the moment is going to be built in CLT. So uh, they imported the panels for this building from Austria. Um, but we, we, certainly, we certainly see no reason why they, should, they couldn't have been made in New Zealand. And uh, it would be nice, nice, to, nice to be able to get them made in New Zealand and get, and get that underway before the Aussies start making it themselves. So the key benefits of cross-laminated timber, it's a low mass system. Which, which, which means that um, you know, mass, is, uh, mass is what you want to avoid in earthquake active um, areas. And so uh, it's, 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 um, it's an excellent system for building in the areas of high seismic activity. And of course, being low mass, it also means that um, it's, it's, you, don't, you, you don't need such massive foundations, in, 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 in soft, particularly in soft soils, it's, uh, because it doesn't have weight. It uh, lends itself very well to that. So in Christchurch, we think it will have a good place. It's lightning quick to build, which means um, that there are huge labour and savings on the, on the building side, and also savings for everybody who's got money tied up in the development chain, because uh, you know, obviously time is money. Because, as, as um, our friend from Glenroy was saying earlier, you know, we, we have uh, some unfortunate um, connotations when we talk about prefabrication in New Zealand. People think about classrooms they went to school in in the 1950s and 60s. But um, as you said, you know, Toyota don't build their, their cars under tarp or on the side of the side of a steep hillside. And if you look around yourself in the world today, no one builds in that way. Every, every product we, we depend on is always built in a factory under controlled conditions. And, why should houses be any different? So you can get a much, much better quality job if you do it in a factory. You can also do it for a predictable cost. This kind of construction is very energy efficient. It has the benefits of thermal mass that tim timber brings, but also because the panels are large and because they're laminated and they've got a, a layer of adhesive in between them, they are more or less airtight as well, which is a huge thing for the energy efficiency of the, of the structure. Michael's talked about the healthy, the health dimension of timber building, so I won't go touch on that again. This is another interesting one. We are, we are in love with trusses in this, in this, um, in this country, and of course trusses are